So, uh, the particular field of standardization that I've been working, uh, working on is uh, the OGC standards and the OGC standard suites. Uh, it's a large set of geospatial standards. You may already know some of them, but that's a picture that puts them together. We have different kinds of data set with different kinds of data to deal with. Uh, most of the GIS world speaks about vector data that are polygons. Uh, and for that, we have the web, web feature server. Service. Uh, then from that, you generate maps. Maps, that's the main topic of this conference. Uh, there is the web map service for serving just maps to be pictured on web browser or any other um, display. Well, uh, maps are generated not only with uh, vector data, but also with raster data. So like uh, in multispectral satellite imagery, you have an array of uh, multiband data sets. And well, there is no, um, the, no the, the first two standards doesn't deal with that. So you get either a map or a feature, but you don't get the actual numbers, the actual band values and their geolocation. For that, we have the coverage, coverage service, coverage standards that I will be speaking about. Then for finding your data, OGC defines catalogs like CSW, uh, which deals about metadata. So you have different kinds of data and description of this data that you can put together, all with standards. For those of you who don't know uh, OGC, well, it's uh, dealing exactly with geospatial data. And uh, you can see in opengeospatial.org, uh, it's composed by with a consensus based involving uh, industry partners in uh, building the standards. And one particular standard that I'm working with is the coverage standard. So um, that's par uh, one aspect, one particular feature. And our work group is contributing to several other technical groups in the OGC. So what's the coverage? Well, basically it tackles uh, the variety of data by uh, providing a structured way of looking at data. Uh, OGC defines abstract coverage as a feature type. And from that, you can have different types of uh, coverages. Uh, in our group, we work with large array databases that are particularly suited for serving graded coverage. So this is what you find best in the uh, RASDAM implementation that we will see later. Graded coverage. Um, are just the start of what is available on the web and around the world with data. So we are moving on with uh, the other type of coverages like multipoint, curved surfaces, and solids, uh, bringing an interoperable way of formatting this data and delivering it from one partner to another, one system to another. So coverage data and service model, the concrete aspects of this. Uh, coverage from the top level overview, the architectural view conceptual, let's say, is a rather simple organization of the data. Uh, so it's, it all starts with a feature, which is a GML standard um, element. And from that, we derive coverage. Um, what a coverage, it, it is a spatial temporal, uh, it is a representation of spatial temporal data. So it must contain and in these three key elements it provides, uh, the definition of the data. Uh, so where it's spatially located, you find in the domain set element. This again uses GML as a base standard and provides the topological description, so the coordinates of where the values are standing in space and time. Uh, okay, um, so once you know where data is located, you have to know what each point represents, what, what these um, structured values represent. And this uh, is done by the SVA common data record, which is the range type element. So you get spatial location of data, structured value, so like multiband image, that was my former domain, so I know that quite well, and range set. Range set is actual values, all put together in the way described by the uh, range type. This allows compact representation of the data to be delivered along with the description how to extract the data and how to locate that into space. So all that you need for a data set is there uh, in this uh, standard. On top of this uh, data set, uh, data model, we provide WCS service model. 
what is the service model about? Well, it uh, provides uh, also key elements. One of them is uh, coverage offerings. This is what the server provides. Um, so you can implement a web server offering services, offering coverages as a service. Uh, it will contain offer coverages, will which will hold the data, and uh, then in the uh, offer coverage you have description about the specific server implementation and the uh, coverage itself, which is the data model that I've shown you before. So that's basically the data structure of the service that you can put uh, on the web and then can be accessed with other systems. The default um, format in which data is delivered is GML, so it's an XML document, rather verbose, uh, so it's suitable for very f um, small data sets. When you need to extract further larger data sets, then you, ca you use uh, different encodings for that. I will show you uh, later an example. So like many other OTC web services, you have the key get capabilities operation. Every OGC compliant uh, web service offers this uh, operation. And this is what gives you information about the server. Uh, what is its content, which formats and extension it supports, and in mm, particular, which coverages are offered. Um, if you find a coverage of your interest that might be a uh, Landsat data set, Landsat image, or a, a time series of data sets, you can get details about that coverage, all the metadata associated with it, with the described coverage. And when you're happy knowing uh, what is inside the server, with get coverage, you extract the data. The key uh, point is that you can extract not an RGB map, but actual values, packet in a um, semantic enriched way, so that your machine can understand how to process further this data. Okay, for performing correctly in get coverage and actually uh, knowing where the data is, it must be addresses, addressed. Uh, we use coordinate reference system for addressing the data. And uh, the interesting thing about coverage is that you can get uh, multidimensional data sets addressed, uh, which means not only uh, geographically located data, but also time series uh, within uh, a same model. So in, uh, uh, in our effort in the standardization, we aim to have time as just another axis into the data set, which is quite different from the uh, time slices that you might be uh, used to. That's a challenging way of showing, and my colleague Piero Campalani is working specifically also on that aspect. To show you uh, what this CRS mapping looks like in the document, it's URI based, so you specify which axis use which coordinate system, like the it is G authority ones that you see here, with URI. So that's portable over the web, and you can get it directly uh, in an intelligible form. What is the interesting part of this uh, mapping is that we have uh, URIs mapped to the actual GML definition of the coordinate system, which means. Uh, among other things, like datum and other um, uh, things relevant to the coordinate space, you get the association with the labels. Uh, so the latitude, longitude, and time in this example. This you can use, uh, or your system can automatically use to query properly the uh, coordinate space of the data set. If you're interested in how time is handled within the data sets, I invite you to follow the discussion on OGC at this link. Uh, this is where the temporal working group is uh, working on the uh, addressing aspects of the standard. So how to address time. Getting to the coverage service, what uh, does it provide you basically? Well, it's, it has a core that allows you to get uh, subsets out of your data archive with two operation. Trim, which says, for example, I have a three-dimensional data set. Let's use a cube as a simple example. So regular time slices put together in space uh, and you get three dimensions. With a slice you say I want two months of data over this bounding box and you get just this part out of, out of the service. Still three coordinate, uh, three dimensional coordinate space. If you do a slice you say I want 
um, for example, one map you can produce with that. I want just the spatial extent over the time series at this time instant, and you get a two-dimensional data set out of it. So you reduce the dimensionality. This is the main difference of the two operations. Then the standard provides you extensions. With extensions, you get uh, you can plug in into the service, into the server implementation, different uh, further operations like scaling of the output, reprojecting the coordinates, so uh, warping the output, and others. This is the big picture about coverages. Data model that I show you, uh, which includes format encodings. So if you want your data out of this web service uh, in a JLT format or NetCDF format, you can specify them and get that out. Uh, what also is interesting is the service uh, part of the uh, extensions that gives you further functionality. So besides the basic subsetting, which is the core of the service, you get others uh, extension. I don't have time to go into details of this kind of extension, but I will just introduce you to the web coverage processing service, which is one particular specific extension which we are using for uh, providing a flexible way of accessing data expressed as a coverage. Uh, in our group, uh, uh, we have been dealing with um, languages and language processing system, so we use a uh, language-oriented approach to getting data, and we aim to provide XQuery for RESTs, you can say. What does it mean? Well, it means you can, wi once you understand the data model, you can query on it using a textual query uh, that can be sent over to the server. What can you do with this kind of queries? On server side, you can compute on the single bands of the data set. You can provide the output of computation. So without downloading data sets files, you can uh, uh, place your query, get a pre-processed data set out of it, directly. Sorry, is this your language or is this a standardized language? Yes, this is our language. So in, in the top part you define on which coverage you are going to operate and uh, for example here in the return clause you want to encode some computation over the band in JLT. It is simplified. I mean you, you have to also specify for example as you can say here uh, the coordinates, the, the, the space over which you want the computation done and so you can start a subset process it and the main part that we are aiming to have is coverage integration this is already possible if you uh, let's say resample or reproject data over a single um, over the same coordinate system coordinate space you can put together several data sets and encode the results of the combination of these data sets uh, Okay, I have uh, no examples to show here, but I have a presentation also tomorrow afternoon where you can see how this language is being used in the L server project for building services over this OGC standard. For now, let's just talk about the uh, implementation that's are available. So um, WCS is a standard, and as an open standard, as not only Raslaman as an implementation, but several others, uh, which are uh, mostly open source. And, okay, Razaman is the core reference implementation, and we believe WCS to be a good future-oriented uh, standard for dealing with large data sets. What does it mean to be a reference implementation with OGC standards? Well, the standards needs, uh, within its specification, the test suite that you have to execute on a server to allow it to be called a, a WCS server, for example. And there is a team engine, which is, which is an automated test system for uh, services, OGC services. Being a reference implementation means you must pass all these uh, tests which go down to the pixel level of the data set that is being used to test the server. Okay, uh, I have to keep fast. A brief word about uh, Razaman, which is the implementation that we are uh, <laughs> developing actively. Uh, both as a community and there is also a commercial company working on the engineering aspects. Uh, it's uh, basically an array database uh, and on top of it we have the implementation of the raster services. So any kind of raster data set that you might want to serve and process can be efficiently used 
and serves o over this um, implementation. Where it has been used and the current founding of this project, Air Server, and new community uh, founded project, is using Razdaman as a core platform to deliver analytics over several um, geospatial, geoscience domains. Uh, and uh, yes, it provides um, a services that the community can use over the web to access the data sets. So this was the compact introduction and overview of the <laughs> standardization effort. And now let's see some comparison and assessment that we have uh, found, out, uh, found out working, uh, applying these standards to the um, large data sets. First of all, coverage and coding. As I told you before, one aspect of the um, coverage is that you can encode that in several different ways and several formats. The reference is GML, so it's XML. It's quite verbose and uh, for the range sets, so for the actual values, that is not always the optimal choice. Uh, you can have out of the server uh, um, a format that allows you to encode everything, so domain set, uh, range set, and range type definition all together. If you have it and if you're okay with it, you can use that. For example, NetCDF is a good candidate. If you don't, well, you can still have um, PNG or other common file formats for storing the values, like the pixels of the image or the values of the ref bands, <laughs> paired with all the other description. Uh, there's an example. Uh, well, that's a simple example that can be replaced, for example, for with a GeoTIFF file directly, but just to show you how it works, you can have the XML part, the coverage definition part, which allows you to interoperate this data set with other automated services encoded in, in uh, XML while the values are provided in a compressed binary TIFF uh, file. So that's quite convenient for delivering data over the web efficiently. Uh, then we had made a comparison with WaterML2, which is another standard, uh, especially about time. Uh, since one of our core efforts is uh, making time um, embedded into the data set itself, so making no assumptions on how it is managed, uh, the key difference uh, with, this, uh, with our model is that uh, we don't deal with time instants. We don't have time labels. Uh, so it's, uh, um, we can optimize the efficiency of accessing the data by having a compact representation of it uh, and having time as one axis directly accessible into the, as you will see, the query language or the service uh, model. One technical detail that I want to share with you, uh, GML 3.3, it is the standard that we are using, um, and we discovered uh, this optimization, like that we have grids can be of different type, they can be irregular or uh, totally warped. Well, we are going to provide a candidate uh, optimization for that, allowing the mix of the two of these data sets. So I have no, sorry, I have no time for these details, but I wanted to share with you this also. With respect to ISO standardization, uh, the most known is SQL. What we are trying to pursue is mixing array data into SQL directly. So have a tight integration of um, array, not only array uh, data, but operators on array data into an SQL-like language. So this is how we deal and compare with other uh, standardization efforts. Yeah, sorry, I had to keep it brief, so thank you for your attention. <laughs> this is it.